One emerging markets analyst believes China is not essential to Intel in advanced micro. David Riedel runs the Riedel Research Group, got back from Taiwan just a few days ago. So why do you think, is it just jumping to conclusions? Is that why we saw that, that sort of knee-jerk reaction in those two names, David? I think it is. I mean, clearly China is a major market for Intel chips, almost 30 percent of their sales. Uh, same for AMD, about 15 percent. But not a lot of that's ending up in the government sector. And this is going to be a slow rollout of this uh, prohibition on having them in government uh, computers only. So I don't see it having a big impact. Can we jump to the conclusion, though, that this is just the beginning? Because maybe that's what the markets are thinking. They're not thinking about just this one step, but thinking about what if it went a little bit further, and that would be a ban on these chips inside any of the computers? Well, it's, it, it's certainly not the beginning, because we've been banning Huawei and other chips and things from, from, uh, from China since uh, 2019. Uh, and this was a, a, a policy that was promulgated at the end of December. So this is just a sort of shining a light on a policy that's actually already been in place for a couple of months. So I think you are probably going to get incremental changes as they ratchet up this concern. The current administration has been very firm on trying to prevent advanced chips from getting into China and trying to encourage chip development here at home. And I think that's going to continue. Do you think investors here are adequately pricing in a potential China risk? Are we just sort of hoping <laughs> that it just stays simmering and nothing really explosive actually happens? Should we start thinking about that, especially as we head towards the elections? I don't in terms of a particular company impact or something like that. I think there will be an incremental uh, movement towards nationals, uh, sort of nationalism in Be from Beijing and, and, and some sort of China bashing on the, on the campaign trail. The real risk in Asia, as you've heard me say before, is a risk of a hot war in the South China Sea or in the Taiwan Straits as a result of some sort of accident. So that's the risk I think people are underpricing. But, David, it's Tim. Because you know Asia so well, there, there are those uh, certainly South China Sea dynamics. But how about the rest of Asia? And who gains by this? I mean, it seems like there's quite a charm offensive with Korea. So Hynix, for sure. Samsung have a lot to gain by this. Uh, I think the, the Japanese chip makers, and I think it, it, there was a time everything was made in Japan. And I think there's, a, there's an aspiration there. Anything to talk about? Absolutely. I was just, as, I, as you said, just back from Taiwan, a lot of great activity on the ground there. It's not just TSMC. There's a lot of other chip makers there as well and people who supply into that industry. So definitely keep an eye on Taiwan. Keep an eye on somewhere like uh, India, which might benefit from a transfer of some of the manufacturing by people like Foxconn, another uh, Taiwan-listed company under Han High Precision, um, uh, to, to India. But I think you're right. North Asia is the one set to benefit most from ongoing struggles in the, in the chip market. You could see Japan, you could see South Korea, and you could see Taiwan really benefiting. I know you said it's not uh, won't translate to a company specific risk statement. You just got back from Taiwan and you're talking about Taiwan Semi, and I, I have to ask you because it, you know, it, it doesn't have the multiple necessarily as as some of the other chips. And I think that you know there's some premium taken out of it just because of China risk. Is that misguided in your view, or is there in fact a China risk? I think there is in fact a China risk. It's impossible to pick when that's going to mm -hmm. materialize. But I think you're just one election away or one fiery campaign speech away from having those tensions ratchet up. So that I would be concerned about that. TSMC is obviously diversifying quickly into other places that they can manufacture, including here in the United States. So I'd keep an eye on that. But they definitely have quite a lot of China risk. All right, David, great to see you. Thank you. David Riedel you. of Riedel Research mm. Guy. Not the stemware. Well, also, actually, this somewhere. But no, I know. We mentioned it last time. Related to great. that, yeah. Look, I don't, again, I'll say, I'll reemphasize, just talk about David's. I mean, he's on the ground there, and he sees the risk. Clearly, the market doesn't see it. But I'll say this as well. I think it was a year and a half or so ago, Jen, Jensen Wang made comments about this, the basically the existential risk to their company in terms of China-Taiwan. Now, that stock's actually, been, you know, it's been on a, in a lower left, upper right. But how, you know, if something were to manifest itself there... NVIDIA probably stands to lose the most. Yeah, I think there's two mitigating factors here that have kind of kept this situation self-contained. Uh, most importantly, I think it's really been the AI boom. I think the, the kind of uh, excitement around that dynamic has been more of a focus and more of a tailwind than this particularly might be as a headwind. And then, as he mentioned, the fact that it's concentrated within the government sector, it, until this leaks really into the private space or until <clears throat> the Chinese regime is, is essentially able to dictate that these that these um, 
these sanctions are placed into the private area of the business or semi-state owned, however you want to kind of describe it. I think it's going to be relatively self-contained and the and the excitement around AI more than offsets even the 15 and 27% respective revenue allocation to AMD and Intel.